<clears throat> I was going to turn off the monitor so that I won't see myself play, but if I do that, I won't see chat. So I'm going to stick the keyboard <clears throat> vertically in front of the monitor where my accordion is. There. Now I can't cheat. Still having trouble. I can find that home key now. out high and low because this seems lower than oh lost that home key again nah. lower than this. that's not the home key that's a speck of dirt oh, I haven't been this lost for a while oh my goodness it's going to be well that's another way to find it going to be in line with that somewhere. You guys are looking at it going like it's right there. There we go. Okay. in a regular scale pattern so I'm not really sure what's going on there <laughs> concentration phase. A lot of times when I'm concentrating, people will say to me, what's wrong? I'll be, nothing. Well, why do you look so angry? I'm not angry. You look very angry. It's kind of scary. And I'll be like, I was just concentrating. <laughs> <laughs> things I've been taught is that my fingers and I'm getting it from the accordion book that my fingers should never do like that that they should be but if, if for instance the note is supposed to be a quarter note I should be playing an eighth note with the rest um, and then adjusting it and I'm like you know I can't count notes. I'm sorry. If I don't know the melody, it's just not going to happen. My brain does it in... Uh, yeah. And it's not the kind of music I like. I heard so much oompa, polka, and so forth in my life that... Well, when you have a memory that doesn't fade very much, 
you just have to say those words. And bam, every song you've ever heard in that store is just played in your memory. It happens in the blink of an eye. And it's like, oh, yeah, I heard them all. So I don't want to hear them again. I'd rather play something that Diamanda Gallus would sing, too. If you don't know who that is, look it up. I could see my work being something of a cross between Diamanda Gallus and Jean-Michel Jarre. But with less rhythm. It's the joke. <laughs> and I'm also forgetting, I'm starting to hunch, that I should be sitting with this lined up like that and then just let this fall. awfully quiet when I'm not putting any force into it. But that's something maybe I need to get used to is that the quiet isn't bad. I don't know. That in fact is the entire point behind this type of practice. So that you can get the feel of the instrument and you don't just get it in your in your conscious mind. You get it in your subconscious mind, in your muscle memory, new neural pathways, like how one day I couldn't find the buttons for nothing, um, but I forced myself to the point of just about brain explosion. The next day, after a good night's sleep, I've had it ever since. I can find the button a lot faster, you know? It's uh, <laughs> elusive. There it is. <laughs> Let's find out what, the dis what these do. There, that one went click. Now, that one click. I have no idea what those things do. These things here seem to be... Okay, that's the band of... It's the lower register. That... Is the violin high register? We'll go back to this. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so single voice high, single voice low. Single voice high. Both voices at the same time. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I'm not going to be playing your typical accordion when all is said and done. It's, um, I don't know. I like the atmospheric music. I discovered Tangerine Dream when I was in grade nine. Grade nine. He's a grade nine music teacher. Uh, he was passionate about music. And so any students who would 
who would stay after school were treated to the latest vinyl albums from the most experimental and latest artists of the day. I and mean, one of them was Tangerine Dream. And I remember becoming utterly enchanted. I also introduced that teacher to Tom Lehrer, who had been introduced to me by my grade six teacher. Um, I was always a precocious kid, so I got into conversations with teachers, and they showed me stuff that the other children weren't really ready for. And Tom Lehrer would have been one of them. I adored him. I was like, oh, now here's a smart guy. And so I got into the Tom Lehrer, but it was the... Um, I'm going to clean these keys along here. Yeah, Tangerine Dream just really impressed on me. And I've I've enjoyed quite a few industrial and Dadaist and such artists since. You know, the electronic, electronic covers in a variety of genres. But when you get that ethereal Brian Eno, uh, Tangerine Dream, Jean-Michel Jarre, these are all the older guys. I not a real big one from memory, so they have to keep coming up for years. And I haven't really paid attention to the latest. It's there's such a wealth of it now. You get on the SoundCloud, you can just listen for days and never hear the same thing twice. There's that much in any given genre. So um, yeah, I've been making my own. And I've always enjoyed making music, but I never bothered worrying about making recorded music because for me. The act in, of the moment, the ethereal act of the moment had value, Be, if, if only by its very precious etherealness, um, like ethereal art, you know, building sandcastles and snowmen. These are things that aren't meant to last. Driftwood mandalas, you know, leaves and seeds. And there's something very priceless about that, and that includes sound art. When you write it down um, or you record it, it becomes fixed in place and a fixed thing. And now people expect to hear it again and again. And somehow that's just not important to me. But I started recording them because YouTube policies about music, content music. And I tried getting some royalty free content and I paid for it only to get it flagged anyway. Um, I have asked artists who are friends if I can use their content and gotten permission only to have it flagged again because these artists had sold some rights to some online seller that was going to publish their work for them. There was a variety of reasons why these different song solutions didn't work. And so I thought, well, you know, I have all these musical instruments. It's, I've been collecting musical instruments since I bought my first flute with an ice cream bicycle job in high school. And ever since then, I've been collecting. And even then, I already had started collecting little pipe flutes and tin whistles and instruments of any kind I could afford. So I thought it's time I started using them to make actual music that I record. So, And check out Chill Rain. I swear to God, it's wonderful. I'm going to try and duplicate that. But I've decided I'm only making music in the winter. Summertime, I'll practice instruments or create samples. But come winter, I'll actually start doing music because there's too much to do in summer and it's too much set up. It takes too long to set up the music. Okay, I'm going. Bye.